The number of fatalities involving people over the age of 65 is steadily increasing. Last year there were six fatal fires in West Sussex. Four of those involved were a person living alone over the age of 65. 20% of the population of West Sussex is over the normal retirement age. We need you to help us make these people safer in their homes. We cannot do this alone. We need you to help recognise common types of fire hazards in the home of your clients. Do they have a working smoke alarm? Do they smoke? Is there evidence of burn marks on furniture and carpets? Are they on medication which makes them drowsy? Is there evidence of substance or alcohol abuse? Are they hoarding? Are exit routes blocked? Is there evidence of overloaded sockets, faulty gas or electrical appliances? Do they have the ability to react to an emergency situation or escape from the property? Do they have hearing or disability problems? We invite you to take the time to watch this short film, which is full of information on the hazards to look out for in the homes that you visit. We need you to help us make these people safer in their homes. As a carer and throughout your normal day-to-day -day caring activities, you may need to put some extra consideration into how you help to minimise the risk of fire in your client's home. Over 65s are putting their lives at risk when it comes to the life-threatening danger of fire in the home, with almost 80% dismissing the possibility of a fire. The person you are caring for may have restricted mobility. This would reduce their ability to leave the house quickly if there was a fire, or if they have dementia, they may be more at risk of starting a fire in their home. You can take measures to reduce the impact of fire by looking for the fire risks around the home whilst carrying out your routine visits. You can start by ensuring that they have correctly fitted and working smoke alarms and check for danger signs that may cause a catastrophic fire. At the end of the film, we will provide you with information on how to arrange a referral should you identify that one of your clients may be at risk. We joined Derek Coville from West Sussex Fire and Rescue Service carrying out a routine home fire safety check for an elderly resident and he explains what to look out for and how you could make a difference as a carer and regular visitor to an elderly person's home. Hello, my name is Derek Coville. I'm one of four community fire safety advisors working for West Sussex Fire and Rescue Service. We actually go around visiting elderly and disabled people to uh, do a home fire safety check for them, fit any smoke alarms that are necessary, connected to care line and anything like that. As carers, you go in and visit these people first, you're the first point of contact. You could be looking out for some of these hazards which we're going to show you today to be aware of. Part of the uh, service we'll do is actually do a walk around the building first of all, upstairs, downstairs, looking at major electrics that are plugged in, sockets, overloaded sockets, cables that are laid out on carpets, trip hazards, stuff like that. So I would then go through with a client afterwards and actually talk about what I found. Yeah. So Queenie, when I was walking around, yeah. I found some overloaded plug sockets. Yeah. Obviously, you can put more than one plug in a multi-socket, something yeah. like that. But you have to be aware of what it is you've plugged in. Yeah. So a lot of low-level stuff is fine, but things like kettles, uh, microwaves, yeah. toasters, stuff like that, have to have their own separate sockets yeah. because they're a 13 amp. Yeah, but amp. it's a microwave up here, isn't it? That's yeah. right, yes. Yeah. But they, they have to have separate sockets for themselves. Yeah. You can't do uh, multi-sockets on any no. of that sort of stuff. No. When I looked around, I see that there was a, uh, a cable up in your bedroom going across the floor. Um, obviously a trip hazard. Uh, we can uh, move that, that to the edge and stuff like that. What, under the bed? No, the one that's going from the side of the bed. Oh, yeah, up yeah. to my lamp, yeah. yeah. Basically yeah. a trip hazard. We can actually move that to the side. Yeah. It's stuff like that. Yeah. Um, this is stuff that you as carers can actually look out for when you're, working, when you're walking around the building. When you're working for these people, it's overloaded sockets and trip hazards like yeah. cables and stuff like that. Yeah. Also on some of the cables, you, uh, I did notice on one of your leads that um, the, the lead has actually come out the back of the plug. Oh, it's it? actually showing some of the cable on the back oh, of the plug. Yeah. Okay. Obviously needs redoing yeah. uh, because it's, it could be pulled out because Which it's not that? fixed. Um, I've got a feeling it's the one in the kitchen, yeah. 
And as carers, this is the advice we would give to you. Always make sure that you use the correct fuse to prevent overheating. It is important not to overload plug sockets, as this can cause fires. Try to keep to one plug per socket. And, if you have to use an extension lead, be careful not to overload it. Make sure you know the maximum number of amps it can take. Keeping electrical appliances clean and in good working order helps to prevent them starting a fire, so watch out for danger signs. These include loose wiring, scorch marks, hot plugs or sockets, fuses that blow or circuit breakers that trip for no obvious reason, and flickering lights. It is a good idea to check regularly and replace old cables and leads, especially if they are hidden, for instance behind furniture or under carpets and mats. And always unplug appliances when you're not using them or when you go to bed. One of the things I noticed when I come in here, Queenie, was that you've got an open fire. Now I've noticed that you've got a uh, basket of logs beside yeah. it, so you burn logs as well as coal, yeah, do you, yeah. on the fire? Yeah. One of the things with logs is that they do spit. Oh, and so yeah. the best thing to have is a spit guard. Yeah. Now I notice you've had got a spit guard there, but the yeah. spit guard doesn't fit the fire. No, no. So really you do need a bigger spit guard yeah. there, all right, yeah. to stop the actual uh, yeah. spitting yeah. Or coming onto the carpet and setting yeah. fire to the carpet. Also with an open fire, do you ever dry clothing in front of it or anything like that? Good. One of the hazards that we do find is people that actually no, uh, put do. they put stuff they in front do. to dry. I usually put them right over here as yeah. well. Yeah. So you keep them away yeah, from the fire. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, because we do get people that actually put them oh, in front yeah. of the fire. Mm -hmm. They overheat and yeah. then they'll catch fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also stuff that you've got on the, on the mantelpiece as well. Yeah. Just be aware that you've got the heat coming from the fire, yeah. which is going to yeah. heat up the, the mantelpiece. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got matches up on top of the mantelpiece. Yeah, know, Just be aware of the matches that are up there on the yeah. mantelpiece. Also, you've got candles up there on the mantelpiece, which will melt. Yeah. They could actually drip down yeah. onto the fire. All right. So just yeah. be aware of what you've got in front yeah. of the fire. Yeah. Also, any furniture that you've got, you've got your chairs nice well yeah. back. Yeah. A lot of people actually, because they get oh, cold yeah. when you get elderly, you actually get closer to the fire. Yeah. So it starts to get hot. So yeah. just be aware of that as well. Yeah. All right. Yeah. A lot of people actually have half rug in front of the fire when they have a fire, basically just be, uh, as because it burns the carpet and stuff yeah. like that. It's a telltale sign for you as carers to actually watch out for yeah. that there's any burn marks on the carpet in front of the fire or on the mat that they've got in front of the fire. It is, it is one of these things that uh, the fire guard isn't sufficient. So uh, you, yeah, as I say, you've got one here, yeah. it needs to be a bigger one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I did have a mat down there, but I fell over it, so my daughter picked it up. Which would be a trip right. hazard. Yes, that's yeah. right. It, mats are a trip hazard. Yeah. It's something you've got to be aware of. Yeah. If possible, secure portable heaters against a wall to stop them falling over and keep them well away from curtains and furniture. Never use them for drying clothes. Queenie, I, I did notice when I was walking around the room that actually you've got quite a lot of candles here. Now, our advice on the candles is, obviously, they have to be in the proper holders, yeah. mm -hmm. right? You have to be in the room when they're alight. Yeah. You must keep them away from curtains. And obviously, if you've got children or anything like that, obviously, you've got to keep them away and make them be yeah. aware. Yeah. So, as carers, something you need to be watching out for is, if there is any candles around the room, you can ask them questions if they're aware of them. And this is the advice we would give you. Candles. Candles are another common cause of fires. Like cigarettes, they can easily set fire to things close by, so take extra care when using them. Make sure candles are secured in a proper holder and away from materials that may catch fire, such as curtains. Put candles out when you leave the room and make sure they're put out completely at night. Right, Queenie, I noticed uh, when I walked around that there is cigarettes and ashtrays, so somebody in the household smokes. Yeah. I don't believe it's you, but somebody else does. Do you know if they smoke in bed? Uh, 
don't know. You don't know. know. One of the dangers that we do find with people smoking is when they smoke in bed, they fall asleep or they drop ash on the bed, don't know they've done yeah. it. It then smoulders once they've gone to sleep and they end up with a uh, fire. Yeah. End up with a bedroom fire, it then becomes the house and yeah, it's a danger yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. So as carers, one of the things you'd be looking for are if there is signs of smoking, if there is cigarette butts that are not in the ashtrays, overflowing ashtrays, burns on carpet, burns on eider downs on beds, stuff like that. It could be on the carpets beside the bed. So the consequences of that are as follows. Cigarettes. Cigarettes are a major cause of house fires. So it is important to take care when smoking. Always use a proper ashtray, which cannot tip over and is made of a material that will not burn. Never leave a lit cigarette, cigar or pipe lying around. And take extra care if you smoke when you're tired, taking prescription drugs or if you've been drinking in case you fall asleep and set fire to the furniture. Always ensure that your furniture has the fire resistant permanent label. Never smoke in bed. Always keep matches and lighters out of children's reach. Make sure that you stub out your cigarette completely and dispose of it carefully. Put it out, right out. Queenie, Next thing we asked you is, uh, do you have a fire plan? Do you know what to do in the case of a fire? Mm -hmm. If you woke up in the middle of the night and the house is full of smoke, would you know what to do? Uh, yeah, basically what we're asking you to do is exit the building. Yeah. All right, get out as best way you can. Leave the building, then you can make the phone call to the fire brigade. We do not want you to stay in the building and make a call. Yeah, no. If for any reason you get trapped upstairs, you can't get down the stairs, we asked you to shut yourself in the bedroom block off the bottom of the bedroom door and stand by a window. Yeah. The first thing we do when we turn up to a fire is to go around the outside of the building to check windows <coughs> to see if there's anybody standing there. Yeah. If you do manage to get out of the building, what we ask you to do is to make somebody aware that you're out so that when we turn up, we don't come in here looking for you. Yeah. All right, somebody else can make the call to the fire brigade for you. Yeah. If there's more than one of you leave, living in the house, obviously make a plan to meet somewhere on the outside of the house, either meeting at the front of the house or at the back of the house, yeah. so that you know that the other person is out, so you don't think the other person's in there. And for you as carers, this is the advice we would give. Planning your escape. It is vital in the event of a fire to have a plan of escape, which everyone in the household knows about. When planning your escape route, the best route is the normal way in and out of your home but think about a second route in case the first one is blocked. It is a good idea to practice your escape plans and make sure that everyone knows how to escape. And remember to review your plan if the layout of your home changes. Keep a phone in your bedroom in case you need to make an emergency call. Queenie, one of the things that we go through uh, with our clients is um, your bedtime routine. Um, do you switch everything off before you go to bed at night? Mm. Good. Uh, well, unplugging things and making sure everything is switched off. Also, if you've had any candles burning, make sure the candles are out. Ashtrays, make sure they're safe and stuff yeah. like that. Mm. Do you shut the doors before you go to bed at night? Mm. Well, you sh me chatting. No, well, you should shut the uh, downstairs doors, which is the lounge and the kitchen. Mm. Obviously, if you had a fire during the night, the staircase is your only escape route, so the doors being shut would allow the smoke through, which would set the smoke alarms off, would also give you time to then to get out before the flames got through. Do you ever have dishwashers or washing machines on at night when you go to bed? No, it, that's a good thing because that's another cause of big fires uh, yeah. uh, during the night. Um, electric and water don't mix very well, so no. if, if something goes wrong with them during the night, nobody's up to actually no. see what goes wrong with them. And here's our advice to you. Closing inside doors at night will help stop a fire from spreading. Turn off and unplug electrical appliances, unless, like your freezer, they are designed to be left on. Check that your cooker, washing machine and any heaters are turned off.
and put up fire guards. Put candles and cigarettes out properly. Make sure that exits are kept clear and door and window keys are in a place where everyone can find them. As carers, one of the things you'll be looking for when you come into the client's kitchen are hazards in the kitchen. One of the things to look out for are the overloaded sockets that we talked about earlier. In the kitchen, it's very uh, obvious when you've got kettle, toaster, uh, microwaves, could all be plugged into the same plug socket. This one here has got two in it, shouldn't have two in it because one of them's the kettle, should have its own independent one. There's also a lead going across the top of the cooker. Also dangerous, when the cooker's on, this lead's gonna melt, it's gonna become a hazard. There's also paper beside the cooker. This is a paper towel, lady's just got it there, back door opens, blows the paper onto the cooker, could catch fire. Another thing to check is the cooker is clean. Make sure there's no build up of grease, anything like that on the cooker. Other hazards to look for in the kitchen, I've noticed some more over this side, we'll go across to look at them on this side of the room. Continuing on from the hazards in the kitchen, another thing we spotted over here is an electric fire. We've got an electric radiated fire here. It's plugged into a twin socket again, Two plugs, one multi-socket, there is a spare plug there. Could have actually put the other plug in the spare socket. It's also got washing in front of it drying. Lady's not in the room, this could catch fire. It's gonna smolder, then burn. Next thing she knows, she's got a fire in here. It is something else you should be watching out for. As I said, one of the things is this multi-socket that's got two sockets in it. While I'm here now, I can actually see there's a spare socket, so we'll take that out, we'll put one plug in each socket and we can do away with the multi-socket. Lady doesn't need that here anymore. One hazard averted. Well, one of the things I noticed while I was walking around the kitchen is the lady's got a wheat bag sitting beside the microwave. Something for you as carers to look out for, just to make sure they're using them properly. There is instructions given to them when you buy them. Here's some advice on the consequences of using wheat bags. These instructions may well be sewn into the bag, but if not, they will be in the, in the box that they come in. If that's the case, you definitely need to keep them safe. A number of incidents occurred when the bag was being used to heat up a bed. This was one of the experiments that was undertaken and it proved that even up to three to four hours later, a fire may occur. Our suggestion is that if you are going to use a wheat bag to warm your bed, remove it before you actually retire. Now I'd like to talk to you about smoke alarms. When you go and visit your client, I would like you to check to see if they've got working smoke alarms. If they have, I would like you to try and train them to test them once a week, or you to test them when you make a visit. If they're not working, then please notify us. We will come along and then fit new smoke alarms or new batteries, whichever required. Both have 10 year batteries. When we're there, we'll also carry out a home fire safety check. If your client is on care line, you will know this by a unit by the phone looks something like this, or they'll be wearing a pendant around the neck, something like this. We then fit a specialist smoke alarm. This smoke alarm notifies care line if there is a fire situation. It works exactly the same way as their pendant around the neck. They will then call them up to see if they are okay. If they do not answer, then care line will call the fire brigade. We also do a deaf alarm for people that cannot hear the normal smoke alarm. It looks exactly the same as a normal smoke alarm and works exactly the same way, except it sends a signal to a box at the side of their bed when they're asleep. It will activate a vibrating pad under their pillow to wake them up and also a strobe light that's on the side of the bed. If you would like any more information on any of these alarms or any more home fire safety information, please notify your local community fire safety office. Thank you. For information on how you can help us ensure that our elderly and vulnerable people are safe in West Sussex, please call the Community Fire Safety Department on 01243 642878 or visit our website at www.westsussex.gov.uk forward slash fire.